I'm here with Dr. Romano to do a video on protecting groups and mechanisms. Hi, I'm Dr. Romano, a professor of organic chemistry at Romano Scientific and the creator of the Orgoman products and the author of the Death Destroyer book. I want to work a problem with you on understanding mechanisms today. Don't focus on the reaction or worry that you got to need to know the reaction for the death, but I want you to try to understand the steps that I'm going to do while I'm showing you how one reactant went on a pathway and made a final product. So what we're going to do is take a look at a reaction and I want you to remember something. Whenever I do a step in a mechanism, if you can name the step, there's a good chance that you know what you're doing. If you make a move and you can't name the step, if I said, what kind of step is this? And you saw it say, well, I'm not really sure. It's a good chance that you're writing an incorrect mechanism. So come along and let's have a look at what I have for you. What I did here is a, a group that you probably recognize from the Dad Destroyer book or from your school that you protect a carbonyl group and you protect it with this acetyl group here. Um, in advanced organic chemistry, we call this a 1,3-dioxalane. You don't need to know that, but all I care about you understanding is this was a protecting group that you used in carbonyl chemistry. What you didn't learn in organic chemistry, though, is that if you have this group and it's a conjugated ketone, as you can see, the double bond seemed to as miraculously migrated. In advanced organic chemistry, we therefore use other protecting groups to remedy the situation. We don't need to get into that. But I just want to show you how the hell did this double bond mysteriously seem to migrate. So have a look. What I did in the first step is a protonation step. And I'm going to take the TSOH, which is going to be a paratoluene sulfonic acid. Um, and as you can see, paratoluene sulfonic acid looks like this. And all this really is is just a big pussycat. It just gives off an H. So all we did is I'm going to abbreviate it as HOTS. And you're going to protonate. And as you can see, we've got the protonated carbonyl. Now. My next step is going to be a nucleophilic attack. There's a nucleophilic attack. So this is my nucleophile. I'm going to attack the carbonyl carbon, which is going to be my electrophile. So you should feel comfortable with that step. So I protonated it, and then I attacked. You never want to have an oxygen that's positive. So the O-tose group, I'll call it O-tose, acts as the base, pulls it off and deprotonates, and then now we're here. Next step, I'm going to protonate the OH group, and I'm going to be getting ready to set up a leaving group. So protonation gives me this. As you remember, an OH is normally a poor leaving group and an acidic medium. So we got to make it into a good leaving group, and I'm going to call that H2O. Now, as you can see, there's my elimination step. Water is eliminated, and you form a carbocation. Boy, is this a stable carbocation. As you can see, we can get resonance from here, and we can have another resonance form with a double bond. Now, watch the magical move, how I move the double bond. I'm going to do an elimination step. The O toes pulls off the H, the bond moves in, and I dump in the electrons into this empty orbital here, and that will give me that. That's a hard move, but hopefully you can see that pretty clearly. Next step, I'm going to protonate, and notice I'm going to add an H to here. And that's here. I didn't put the H in for clarity. And notice there's my plus charge. I got a wickedly stable carbocation. Now I'm going to do an intramolecular nucleophilic attack. And then that would give me my cyclic structure. And then I do a final deprotonation and boom. So as you can see, I get this. But unfortunately, this is not a good way to go because if my goal was to protect this, um, the double bond has migrated. But the important thing for you to understand is to understand the moves that I made on this mechanism. If you can understand that, the DAT exam is going to be a piece of cake. Remember, for the DAT exam, just think simple. But if you can go in there and understand some good concepts, we can go for the 30. All right, I hope you enjoyed this clip. 
Um, it's a little on the rougher side, and it's more for those kids who are going for that 25 to 30 than the kids that are just struggling. I did a tape that I want you to check out where I did an old DAT exam that was released by the ADA. I want you to check that out. It's really easy, but it'll wet your beak a little bit. All right, good day to you. Bye-bye.